What is going on fellow developers? My name is Tyler Potts and in today's video we're going to learn how to create this nice looking contact form um, for your website. So it's a little contact form page. We have the contact team. Now normally you'd have your header above here but because everyone's headers are different we're obviously just going to leave that blank um, and also obviously a footer below but we're going to leave that blank as well. You guys can add in whatever you want around this. Um, we also have the little title of the page which is contact the team uh, a little a little text below just to tell you to fill out the form and one of our members will get back to you as soon as possible right whatever you want here of course and then we have the actual form here now the form is on a card that is floating above this nice little gray gradiented background with also as you can see this um a gradient going down so we have this standard gray and then we've got this diagonal uh, gradient going down and as we shrink this down you can see it is also responsive and it will respond all the way down to mobile as you can see and it still looks really nice and works really well so without further ado guys let's continue on with the video Okay guys, so I've got a simple VS Code instance open with um, no files in it or nothing in it yet. We're going to create the files in a second. Um, but you're also welcome to use whatever text editor you want. I just use VS Code because it's more convenient for me. Now, you're going to need to either know how to convert SAS into CSS, which is straightforward. You just don't nest the... Um, <laughs> you just don't nest. Um, but... If you're not using it, you can also go and install, or if you are using SAS, then I am using the live SAS compiler. There is. So we're going to be using the live SAS compiler by Ritwick Day. You can also use this same thing here. And also I'm going to be using the live surfer, which is also by Ritwick Day, which allows me to launch my HTML files in the browser um, without just having to double click them. So let's just go back here and let's start creating some assets. So I'm going to use index.html. I'm going to hit enter and then I'm just going to use, I'm going to create a, a folder and I'm going to call it assets. Now inside this assets folder, actually, you know, we don't even need an assets folder. Let's just start off straight with a SAS, oh, if I can actually spell, rename, a SAS folder. Now inside of my SAS folder, I'm going to create a new file and it's going to be called main.sas. So you can also use CSS, you don't have to use SAS, um, but it's just my preference. Um, but yeah. Cool. So in this, we're just going to say margin zero, padding zero, box sizing border box. And then I'm just going to give it a font family of fire sans sans ser oh, serif. How do I even get close to there? Sans serif. There you go. Now, if I hit watch sash down here, it's going to take my SAS file, create a CSS file and drop in a compiled version of that SAS. So let's just close that and now anytime I make a change let's just say body background color uh, red for example hit save if we go in here you can see it's now been compiled already and it just updates when we need it perfect so let's just delete the body red we don't actually want that um, and let's go into index and just link this up so let's do an exclamation mark here I'm just going to shut this side by now because we only need these two files I'm going to zoom in uh, that might be a bit too much, but we'll, we'll keep it at that for the moment. Um, and in the title, I'm just going to say CSS form or contact the team. Contact the team. Hit save. Then we're going to use a link to link our CSS. So we're going to do dot slash CSS main CSS. And now if we hit save, we go into our explorer, right click and click open with live surfer. Now again, you could just double click this HTML file in your file structure. But for me, I like using the live surfer. It feels a lot more fun to do. So, as you can see, contact the team is now there. Let's just write something in here, say hello world, and there you go. But it's in there, and you can see our CSS is working because it is not padded in or has any serif. serif it's not a serif font, it's a sans serif. So there you go. So that is working perfectly fine. Let's just close that surface started down there. And let's actually write out our markup. So I'm going to zoom out one for the markup just so it's a bit easier to read. Now I'm just layering this in. So normally on my page, I'd have like some sort of page wrapper. So you could go page wrapper. I'm just going to call it a main, right? And then inside of my main, I'm going to have a section. Now each, I normally have sections on my page. This will just be the main section for this area. And then I always have a container to contain the width. Now, the reason I have the container 
here and not just make it contain on the section is because doing the contain insides means I can contain the content but then make the background colors and stuff stretch to the far sides of the pages. Now in here we're going to have a H1. Now in the H1 I'm going to do contact the team. I'm then going to do a paragraph and I'm just going to copy this paragraph from um, what we wrote out before. So let me just get that. And there you go. We didn't want to write that all out again. And also that is on why are you on your own line? You should not be. And there you go. So that's the paragraph there. You can also fill, fill it in with whatever you want. I'm just going to do form with the class of... For, well, actually, I don't need a class, do I? Because it's just one form. But normally, you would add some sort of class to it to identify what form it was or an ID. Um, and then we're going to create a few form groups. So I'm going to create a form group. So these are going to be the containers for our labels, which we're just going to say first name. And we're just going to say first name here. And we're going to do a star because this is going to be a required field. And then we're going to have an input of type text. Now, in here, this is going to be first name, first name. And I can just say required and then class is equal to form element. So let's just make this easier to read by going boop. Now I feel like when I save this, it's gonna try and switch it back, but hopefully it does not. And then below here, we're just gonna have a placeholder that says, let's say, John. We could do Jane or John, whichever one you prefer, Jane or John Doe. Uh, save, and there you go. Now we have our first name here. Now we're gonna copy this, and we're gonna paste it a couple of times. I'm gonna copy this, paste another one, and in here, we're just going to rename the first name to be last name. And up here, just swap the first to be last. Save. And this one to be Doe. There we go. That's looking a lot better. Also, it's when I paste it, for some reason, it's auto compiling it down or, you know, compressing it without having this nice spacing. So it's kind of annoying, but yeah, we'll deal with it. We'll deal with it. So this one is going to be email. Now, oh, not email, email. Um, and in here, we're just going to put email address and instead of type we're just going to do type email obviously so it gives us the right format and here we can just say john.do at example.com there you go so that's our placeholder so there it is all up there there's the first three now we're going to create a second one because we're going to be doing two column grids as well so kind of think about what forms you want to fit in the pattern and let's swap the email out to be a company obviously the type can't be company so let's put that back as text um, and then this is just going to be company and not company address, just a company. Now, this is not a required field. So we're going to remove the required from here and also remove the asterisks we had at the end there. So there you go. We've got, we've got one, two, three, four fields. Now, the final one, the final field is going to be a, another form group. Um, but it's going to have the class of full because we want this one to be full width at the bottom. Whereas these ones are going to be side by side. And then we're just going to say label. It's going to be for our message. So we're just going to say, what are you looking for? And then we're going to have a text area. Oh, yeah, that's right. And here we're just going to have a name of message, message, columns, none. We're just going to delete that, rows, none. But we will have a class of form elements, just like the other one. And then a placeholder. Oh, that's going in the class. One second. Placeholder, which is going to be equal to... I want a website, please. <laughs> just an example. Anyone can write what they want in there. That's just what I'm going to use for now. Now, we do have one more form group to do, um, but this one's actually going to be called a submit group because this one, gonna, this is where our buttons are going to be. And then here we're going to have an input with the type of submit and the value will be send message. Oh, that's message. Message. Uh, there we go, message, and there you go. So that is the whole markup for this. So let's just go back over it quickly. So we've got the we've got a main which does nothing for now. It's just our normal whole page wrapper. So there's some classes you could add to this, but for now this is just for semantic HTML5. Um, we've got our section again. This is what I use for sections on my page. So each section, so let's say a form, a newsletter input, or a um, an image carousel section, will all be put inside a section with a specific class name. So we can put class. Um, contact form or section contact form so we could just say section hyphen contact let's do that section contact and then we've got a class of container well, this is going to contain our content within a width or within constraint so it's not spreading all the way to the end of the width we've got h1s and paragraphs tags for tags and then in our form now this is the important part we've got our form we have form groups wrapping label and inputs together we have a form group with our last and first name. We have an email uh, input. We have our company. 
We have a text area message, um, so we can enter in a larger amount of text and then a submit group for our button. So that's all there is for the markup, which is perfect. So that markup file is now done. Let's move over to our SAS file or our just CSS file. Now, we could do styling to our main here, but again, we don't want to. We want to style up our section and this section is called contact section, I believe. Um, section contact, wrong way around. Section hyphen contact. There you go. So we've got that. Now, I'm going to set a min height to this straight away, and it's going to be 100 VH. Now, VH stands for viewport height, so it's going to... 100 is basically like the percentage, so this could be 100% of the whole screen's height, whereas if you was to do, let's say, 100%, it will do 100% of the content's width uh, or height, which isn't obviously what we want. So we're going to do min height 100 VH. We'll do padding top of about 100 pixels, padding bottom of 100 pixels, just to give it some nice spacing. We're then going to do a background color, oh, background image. Now, this is the important part. We're going to do a linear gradient, and we're going to set to 175 degrees. Now, we're going to start the top off with a gray of 50, up 50%. 50%. We're then going to start the second bit off with a pink. Now you can choose whatever colors you want here, but you can also feel free to use the same colors. And then this final part, so if we just save here, let's not add this section. You can see we've got this, this nice little halfway down the page, we've got our cutout. Look, as we scroll out, you can see we've got this diagonal line going across, just using an image gradient. But we want to do enough for gradient. So we want to have, we want to have a block color up here and then a gradient down here. And obviously this is just a solid color. Now to do that, we can just add another color onto this list. And let's just say 9B. 75d7 it's a nice little purple hit save and as you can see it's now applied so this is now equal to 100 percent so this is the same as just doing 100 percent it won't change we could also put this 50 percent and it will just break you know, pink will just be disappeared because it's stuck in the middle we could put this at 70 percent or like even make it even half 51 percent we save you can see there's just a sliver of pink at the top um but obviously we don't need it so we're just going to delete it and there you go you've got this nice pink gradient purple gradient right here where our form will sit above so that is the section contact bit done now we have our container now the container will have well it doesn't need a width i was gonna say width 100 percent but it, you know block it's a block element so it's already got a width 100 percent we're gonna say max width of 12 uh 1280 now if we slide this out You'll see the text spans all the way up until you get to about here, which is obviously 1280. We're then going to say margin zero auto. Now this is going to center our content. So we're not adding any margin to the top or the bottom, but we are saying automatic left and right, which will pull it in the center. As you can see, the content is now centered. Next up, we're just going to add some padding left. And this padding left is going to be about 32 pixels for mobile padding right. 32 pixels hit save and there we go we've got some padding but on bigger screens that padding isn't enough so let's say here it's not really a lot here so you know what we're going to do we're going to add some more padding so we're going to use min width so because we're working from mobile first we're going to use media min width 768 pixels and we're just going to say padding left 64 padding right 64 save so it's 32 at the minute as you get bigger you can see that big jump in gap there it is now double the size on the padding, but let's say even further out, it's still not enough padding. So when we get much further out, let's copy this one last time. And we're just going to say 1024 pixels this time. So a large iPad or a landscape iPad. And we're going to double this and we're going to say 128 pixels. Now let's open this. And as you can see, it's already a lot bigger. So this is like iPad, normal iPad, well, phone, iPad. Uh, iPad landscape and bigger there you go so now it just constrains a little bit better and it looks a bit nicer now you can choose whatever padding you want you can style it up however you want this is just an example of how I think it will look nice we'll use our h1 now so we're going to set this we're going to make it a light or not we're going to make it a darkish but not too gray gray dark gray gray <laughs> we're going to have a font size and the font size will be equal to 36 pixels we're then going to have a text transform of uppercase um, just because, you know, titles I prefer having stand out. So it's going to be cap capital. So it's like it's shouting at you. Then we're going to have text line center because we want the title to be centered. Then we want some margin below of 16 pixels. There you go. So that's the title done. Now we can go on to the paragraph now and we can just give this a color of a slightly lighter gray because I want it to be lighter than the actual title because it doesn't need to stand out as much. 
we're gonna have a font size of about 18 pixels no that's a font style font uh, font size of about 18 pixels just to make it a little bit bigger a little bit easier to read but also the line height is too close so let's make it 1.5 to stretch the line out a little bit so it's easier to read especially for people who, who struggle to read uh, text in close quarters and let's do a margin bar of 32 pixels to push the form a lot further down there you go so you go so that's this heading bit done let's now style our actual form so i'm just going to call form here form and in here i'm just going to display this as grid so we're going to be using css grid to style up our elements we're going to use a grid template of a template columns of repeat oh or actually this one could just be one fraction because they all just need to be one fraction each our grid gap however needs to be 16 pixels just to give it a bit of spacing we don't need a background color because obviously that's not great let's do white there you go uh, let's also give it a padding of 32 pixels to bring it all in. A border radius, um, border radius, and this is going to be 16 pixels to give it a nice curve. And just to make it stand off the page, what we're going to do is we're going to add a box shadow, and this is going to be of zero pixels. We're going to make it six pixels on the y axis to push it down a little, and we're going to make the spread or the blur 12 pixels. So we're going to do, add an RGBA, oh, why is that in brackets, no idea, RGBA 0, so we're going to do a black RGBA, but we're going to give it the opacity of 0 0.2, so 20%, and there you go, you can see there's this subtle gradient, now we could set this to 0 for example, and it will just sit behind it perfectly, but I think when we add a 6, it kind of makes it like, it look, like it's floating from the bottom upwards, uh, which always looks nicer, I think. Um, Anyway, so let's go be, be down here and let's give this a media width because at the minute, oh, when we are on a mobile, it's fine to be all in grid. But when we get to a desktop, you can see that doesn't look so great. So let's just add a quick media query um, to make it responsive. So we're going to make min width. We're going to say 768 pixels. And we'll give it a grid template columns of repeat, which is just going to repeat a pattern. And we're going to say two, one fractions. So once we get to a bigger screen size, you can see now they're side by side, which is perfect. Now there's another thing we need to know uh, to do, but we'll do that slightly later. It's, it's to make this, the actual message box, stretch out the whole way and not just half, because it doesn't need to be two with the button. But that's fine for now, let's carry on. So down here, we're gonna add a form group. Now that is capitals, I'm sorry for shouting. <laughs> Form group, and this is going to have a margin bottom of 16 pixels just to push things down a bit further. Although, we do have a grid gap, so this is actually pointless now. The only reason I made this form group was for our gap, but now it's kind of pointless. Yeah, you know, it's fine, it's fine, we'll leave it off. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to create our label, right? And our label is going to be display blocks. We want it to be on its own line, so there you go, that looks a lot nicer. Now let's give it a margin bottom of about five pixels just to push the actual input form down a little and let's give it a light color gray like we did for the text just so it's not so noticeable. We're then gonna give it a font size. I'm gonna make it slightly smaller than what it is just because I don't feel like it's that necessary. I feel like the forms need to actually, the form elements, so the form elements need to actually stick or element, uh, needs to stick off the page a lot more. So let's give this an appearance of none. So this is just gonna reset our appearance um, it's going to basically reset our, let's zoom in a little, it's going to reset our um, things appearance, our style, oh, I saved the wrong thing, I was supposed to save here, there you go, so it's resetting that, but you can see there's a really ugly outline and border on it, so we're going to say outline, none, border, oh, border, none, save, and there you go, but now you can't actually tell why it is, so let's just display it as block, let's give it a width of 100%, um, and let's just give it a border radius of 8 pixels. Padding of around 12 pixels, 16 pixels. And then a background colour. Now this one is actually going to be a really, really light grey. There you go. So now it's looking a lot nicer. But we can still resize this form and it messes up the whole page. As you see, as I stretch it out more, it makes the whole thing look a lot worse. Which isn't great, and that's not exactly what we want, because now look, we can now scroll sideways on our website, which that's not fun. Um, 
So let's actually go just below form element and let's create a text area. And inside text area, we're going to say resize none. Hit save. And there you go. We can no longer grab the bottom corner and resize it. But I think it needs to be slightly higher. So let's say min height, 100 pixels. And there you go. Now it's a lot taller, so you can add a lot more messages in there. So that's looking good already. But um, again, um, let's have a look on desktop. So as you can see on desktop, this does not stretch the whole way across. And that's not cool. We need to actually make that stretch across. So if you remember correctly, in our markup, our HTML, we gave the form here, the group with the uh, message in, a class of full. So if we go back and we target, oh, let's go back. And if we target that full, so inside form group, if we do and dot full, so this is a CSS, uh, there's a SAS class just to say, if the form group has a class of full as well, then we can say grid columns, if I can spell grid column, one spanning minus one, which is basically just saying head, start from the start, so from the first grid element, and go all the way to the end. Hit save. Now on desktop, you can see it now spans the whole way across, which looks a lot better and just works a lot better, I think, in general. So there you go, so that's now working. Um, but now we need to do our button because our button looks ugly as hell, right, guys? So underneath form group, we created a new one, which is going to be dot form or dot submit group. In the submit group, we need grid column and we need to do the same thing what we did for the uh, text area. We just need to say one spanning to the end, just so this is now fitting to the end of this. And then we need to say text align right, just to send it to the end there. So now when we stretch out here, it should be, as you can see, full width, which is perfect. So now we've got a full width area. So now in here, we need to actually style the input of type submit. So we're going to use a little pseudo there to do a type of submit to target it. And we're going to set the appearance to none, border to none, or border none. Nope, that's not a thing. Border, none. There we go. That took a long while to just get that. That's a silly thing. Uh, outline, none. And then we're going to give it the background of none. And there you go. Now it's just a standard text. So let's start styling it. We've stripped it back and now we can style it how we want. So we're going to say 12 pixels, 16 pixels. I'm going to set the background color equal to um, the pink. So this one here. We're then going to give it a border radius of 8 pixels. There you go, so it's looking better already. We need the color to be white. There you go, a lot better. Um, and then let's give it a cursor of pointer because we need we need it to actually look like we can click it. But we're gonna give this a transition, not transform, a transition of 0 0.4 seconds. And we're gonna say when we hover over it, the background color is gonna be the purple, as you can see here. So now, when we hover over it, you can see it goes from the pink to the purple, which looks a lot better. But another thing I want to do is when we click in here, I want it to show that we're clicked in here. So it highlights this. So if we go back up to the form element and we can say at focus, we can say box shadow, zero pixels, zero pixels, six pixels, RGBA, zero, 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 two. Oh, I just deleted the whole thing. Um, and now when we click in one of these, you can see it now highlights it with a little box shadow, but it doesn't look like it's pulling off the page. So to fix that, I'm going to change the background color to be white. So now when we click it, you can see it's like it's actually pulling itself off the page. But let's make it look like it actually does come off the page. Let's do 0.4s. So when we click one, you can see it feels like the element is being pulled off the page and coming forward. Okay, guys, so now if we just move this over here, this... Let's shrink this down and make it wider. And there you go. So on a desktop screen, we've got this lovely little form. You've got your John Doe, your Tyler, your whatever. If we hit submit, it's not going to send because we need to fill in the fields. Um, but now if we shrink it down, um, you can see on iPad, it would look like this. And then on mobile phone, it would look a lot more like this. So let's just have a look on an actual device. This. So let's say iPhone Plus. You can see it looks really nice. Let's go for an iPad. There you go. So the iPad, it's a bit zoomed out right now, but if we give it, um, let's just go to 100%. There you go. So this is the iPad's look. Let's turn the iPad sideways, and there you go. You get that extra look there. And finally, let's just say something random like a Pixel 2. There you go. So that also looks really good. So let's just come out of this, 
close that and there you go guys so that is going to be the end of this video guys thank you all for watching this video if you enjoyed it don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you want to see more then don't forget to subscribe to the channel um and finally guys if you have any questions or you you know you want to just drop some messages below or just say thank you for the video drop it down below guys you guys have been awesome and i hope you've got to the end if you did get to the end write so write a comment like hashtag team contact at the bottom and i will know you got to the end of this video and i will give you a heart personally on the channel page but anyway guys um thank you all for watching this video and i will see you in the next one peace out